Hi, the sci-fi recapped here, today, I am going to explain the science fiction drama art film called, Melancholia, spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The film begins with an introductory sequence involving the main characters and images from space, set to the prelude of Richard Wagner's Tristan Uendi Assault, these 16 slow motion shots symbolically reveal key elements of the film, Justine in deep melancholy with birds falling behind her, the estate lawn and a sundial with everything casting two shadows, Peter Bruegel's The Hunters in the Snow Burning, Melancholia covering Antares, Claire carrying Leo through the golf course as her feet sink into the ground, a black horse collapsing under an aurora, Justine standing among clouds of insects emerging from the ground. Justine, Leo and Claire under a sky with Melancholia, the moon and the sun visible, Melancholia passing by Earth, electric currents coming off of utility poles and Justine's fingers, Justine in her wedding attire trudging through a dark stringy material, Melancholia coming back towards Earth, a burning tree outside of a window, an unconscious or dead Justine, again in her wedding attire, floating in the water. And finally Justine and her nephew building their magic cave, before planet Earth crashes into the large gas giant planet Melancholia becoming one. The film continues, in two parts. Part 1, Justine. Delayed by their stretched limousine's difficulty traversing the narrow winding rural road, newlyweds Justine and Michael arrive two hours late for their own wedding reception at the estate of Justine's sister Claire, and her husband John. Upon their arrival, Justine takes note of a brightly shining red star, in the sky, John explains it is the star Antares, in the constellation Scorpius. Justine has a dysfunctional family, brother-in-law John constantly complains about having to pay for the wedding despite being very well off, father Dexter is hedonistic and selfish to the point of narcissism, while mother Gabby is brutally jaded, openly declaring her hatred of marriages during her wedding speech. No one ever asks what Justine wants, or why she is unhappy, but throughout the dinner she is praised for being beautiful. Claire urges Justine to hide her debilitating melancholy from her new husband Michael, Justine finds several excuses to flee the wedding reception and wander the estate by herself, at one point, while the guests stand around waiting for the cutting of the cake, Justine and Gabby independently escape to take baths. Michael is pressured to give a speech at one point, but it is very dispassionate and vapid, he attempts to consummate his marriage with Justine, despite her being clearly non-receptive, even ignoring her at one point when she asks if they can simply sit together for a while, causing her to flee in frustration. Claire tells Justine she is lying to everyone, while John aggressively reminds Justine how much the wedding cost and tells her she better be goddamn happy. Justine's boss Jack, is ruthless and greedy, during his wedding speech, He's hustling Justine to meet a work deadline, he pushes her throughout the evening to create a tagline to promote a new campaign. Her boss's nephew Tim, is given the chance to exploit the opportunity to get the tagline at all costs in order to promote his career, a task similar to what Justine was previously so successful at. He reluctantly but doggedly pursues Justine throughout the wedding reception, pressuring her for the tagline. Eventually, Justine goes out onto a sand trap and has sex with Tim, Unable to get the tagline from Justine, Tim is later fired for his professional failure, finally reaching a breaking point, Justine resigns by telling Jack that he is a despicable, power-hungry little man and storming off. After several hours of being alienated from each other, Justine and Michael quietly agree to call off the marriage, Michael departs, leaving a severely depressed Justine isolated at the estate, with Claire and John furious at her. While storming back into the estate, a wedding planner tells Claire the total number of beans in a jar for a lottery that was held during the event. Early the following morning, while horseback riding with Claire, Justine notices Antares is no longer visible in the sky. Part 2, Claire. Later, the reason for Antares's disappearance has become public knowledge, a newly discovered rogue planet called Melancholia, which entered the solar system from a point behind the sun, was blocking the star from view. The planet has now become visible in the sky as it approaches ever closer to Earth, John is excited about the flyby predicted by scientists, while Claire is frightened by alternate predictions of Earth being hit and destroyed. Melancholia's first approach and final collision with Earth, as described and shown briefly in a similar diagram in the film. In the meantime, Justine's depression has grown worse, she can barely muster the mental strength to get inside a cab to arrive to Claire's and John's estate and is essentially catatonic upon arrival. Claire takes her sister under her care, one day, while horseback riding, Justine finally notices Melancholia in the sky, visible to the naked eye. Upon seeing Melancholia in person, 
Claire becomes withdrawn and fearful, afraid that the end of the world is imminent, despite her husband's assurances, she searches the internet and finds an article predicting that Earth's gravitational pull will draw melancholia back towards it after its flyby, ultimately leading to the Earth's obliteration. Her husband assures her that these anecdotes are written by prophets of doom, Claire tries to relax, to little effect, meanwhile, Justine unexpectedly shows signs of improvement. She begins to bathe and eat meals on a regular schedule again, the day of the predicted flyby, Justine tells Claire that the earth is evil, and that they don't need to grieve for it. Claire dismisses her sister's claims, but is unsettled when Justine unexpectedly tells her the correct number of the bean lottery from the wedding, as proof of her clairvoyance, Justine then tells Claire, life is only on earth. And not for long, that night, melancholia passes very close to earth, but ultimately begins to recede in the night sky, to Claire's great relief. The next morning, John has become visibly nervous, not breaking away from his telescope, when John vanishes after Claire naps, Claire observes melancholia through the astronomical equipment and realizes it is actually getting bigger and circling back towards the Earth, as predicted by the internet article. Horrified, she looks for John, only to find him dead in the stables, he purposefully overdosed on pills Claire was saving, Claire releases their horse Abraham, and when Justine asks where John is, Claire says that he has ridden into the village. Claire calls the rest of her family together for a completely typical breakfast, but shortly after, this attempt to maintain normalcy falters, as she once again checks Melancholia's closeness, seeing that it has nearly doubled in size, Claire realizes the earth is doomed and descends into a panic. In a moment of desperation, she attempts to flee the estate with her son, but the cars will not start, and the golf cart shuts down as she attempts to cross the same bridge that Justine had attempted earlier, returning to the mansion, Claire tries to accept the inevitable. In a private conversation with Justine, Claire suggests that their last act be coming together on the terrace with wine and music, Justine crassly dismisses her idea. Having noticed that Abraham is wandering around the estate without any sign of his father, Claire's son Leo is frightened, Dad said there's nothing to do, nowhere to hide, Leo says, aware of Melancholia's closeness. He is reassured by Justine, who uses his innocence in order to soothe him, saying that they can be safe in a magic cave. Justine cries to herself as Leo embraces her, they gather branches and sticks to build the cave in the form of a teepee without canvas. The magic cave stands in the middle of a field on the golf course, Leo, Justine, and Claire sit in the teepee, holding hands, as Melancholia draws near, strong winds rake the area as the atmospheres of the two planets begin to violently combine. Leo believes in the magic cave and closes his eyes, Claire is terrified and cries profusely, Justine watches them both, and accepts her fate calmly and stoically. In the last shot, Leo and Justine sit in meditative posture as Melancholia fills the sky on its final approach, its surface becoming closer and closer with each passing second. Claire breaks away from their handhold and despairs alone, Melancholia collides with the earth, sending a wall of fire thundering through the golf course, vaporizing the trio and cutting the screen to black. The sound of the collision of both planets echoes and rumbles, its volume gradually quietening into total silence. Melancholia is a 2011 science fiction drama art film written and directed by Lars von Trier and starring Kirsten Dunst, Charlotte Gainsbourg and Kiefer Sutherland with Alexander Skarsgård, Brady Corbett, Cameron Spur, Charlotte Rampling, Jesper Christensen, John Hurt, Stellan Skarsgård and Udo Kier in supporting roles. The film is a Danish production by Zentropa, with international co-producers in Denmark, Sweden, France and Germany, filming took place in Sweden. Melancholia premiered May 18, 2011 at the 64th Can Film Festival, where it was critically lauded, Dunst received the festival's Best Actress Award for her performance, which was a common area of praise among critics.